bulletins this morning. If you don't have one, someone needs to give you one. And it's on the screen. And it is on the screen. Oh, hey. You know, I've been thinking about sheep. Sheep are stupid animals. They are much dumber than most, or maybe almost as dumb as people. But I've been thinking how much they need a lead. How vulnerable and in danger they are. And how much they are like us in so many sorry ways. Of course, the most familiar portrayal of sheep and the shepherd is recorded in the Psalms. They're in the 23rd Psalm. Let me read that for you this morning. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow grass and leads me beside all of those quiet waters. He restores my failing health. They, he helps me to do what honors him the most. Even when walking through the dark valley of death, I'll not be afraid, for you are close beside me, guarding and guiding me all the way. You provide delicious food for me in the presence of my enemies. You've welcomed me as your guest, and blessings overflow. Your goodness and unfailing kindness shall be with me all of the days of my life, and afterwards I will live with you forever in your home. It's no accident that God's chosen to, to call us sheep. The behavior of sheep and human beings isn't similar in so many different ways. Uh, our mass mind, our mob instincts, our fears and timidity, our stubbornness, our stupidity, our perverse <laughs> habits, all are parallels of profound importance. Yet despite these, these adverse characteristics, Christ chooses us to buy us, he calls us home, and he calls us by name. He makes his own delights in caring for us. I have the picture that is here and also on the back of your bulletins this morning. We're going to talk about that picture we shared a, a sermon much like this about seven or eight years ago, and I, I, I enjoy the idea. Uh, it appears as though in that picture, the shepherd has just led the sheep through a dark valley. Uh, they've approached sunshine, clear waters, and green pastures. As we talked this morning, want you to uh, just find yourself in this picture with Jesus. It's a familiar picture of Jesus there with the sheep. Now let's remember that the Good Shepherd is very close to the sheep. He knows every single sheep by name. You find that in the old and uh, shepherds of today, that even with a great flock of sheep, the Good Shepherd actually will know each sheep by name. The closeness, the care. First one that we see uh, is the black sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Back there, following along behind. Mm -hmm. Is he not the little black sheep? Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, once I felt like the black sheep. You ever feel like a black sheep of the family or the black sheep of this or that? No. Uh, often I, I would walk to the beat of another drummer and sometime walk without even a drum. Uh, I felt different. We live in a day today of a, 
uh, of all kinds of initials. Uh, ADD, ADHD, and so and so and so. Uh, and each one of us feels different. Uh, we feel that we, we, we just don't fit. Do you ever feel like that, that you just don't fit? Mm -hmm. Just trying to find a place to put in? Whoever makes jigsaw puzzles, I want to get my hands on the one that's responsible for making sure there is usually a piece in that jigsaw puzzle that doesn't fit. Right. <laughs> you know, a square peg in a round hole. <coughs> The building that fits together well fits to bec uh, because there are off also square holes for square pegs. The difference makes for a healthy block. Not all the same, because difference is sometimes what makes you very unique and exciting. Here at Hope Community, we have a lot of different people. We have square pegs, round pegs, triangles, and circles. And each one for a purpose. Whether you feel like a black sheep or a white sheep or a blue sheep, there is a place for you. The second one we would see is uh, the one I'm going to call the carried. Sheep. The sheep that Jesus is there carrying in his arms. And these are the hurt, the wounded. Do you ever feel so torn down and so tired and hurt that you just don't know how you're going to get through the very day you're in? God understands that. Uh, God's people are told that they need to rest, that we need to, to take time away. You know, rest, I have discovered, is something that God actually commands us to do. And I think sometimes we're not very good listeners. Uh, God's people are told that they need to rest, to lay down in green pastures and allow God to restore their soul. Jesus said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. That's a marvelous scripture, we will think upon that. Do you know that we're told to rest over 350 times in the Bible? Over 350 times in the Bible we're told to rest. Uh, there are times that you need to be alert and active as you fight good fight. But rest is also required to restore the soul and to let Jesus lift you up. I find it interesting, on the seventh day of creation, what did God do? God rested. We're made in the image of God. And we are to rest, and many times, just to allow Jesus to carry us. Then there's the trailing sheep. I, I, I have the trailing sheep. Uh, there, there's two or three of them, could be, but I, I, I find this one way back here uh, to be a trailing sheep. I, I think we got too many trailing sheep. Uh, the one that follows, uh, probably not real closely. Probably followed closer there in the uh, dark valley because it was more bright. That sheep is close enough to catch up if it has a problem, uh, but gives indifference uh, during their, their everyday life. I think sometimes if he doesn't, God surely must get tired of hearing our complaints. Uh, I'm not sure he does, but that's because he's God. Uh, follows, but not closely. Uh, we need to learn to not be that trailing sheep, but to walk closely with him, 
We need to give him more than just our problems, but our praise and worship. We need to walk closely with the shepherd. The wandering sheep. Well, here's a sheep over here that just wandered off, laying around back there. He, he's not with the rest of the flock quite. Uh, he's far off from the flock. He, he still considers uh, himself to be a part of the flock, uh, but doesn't get very involved. He's following his own agenda or her own agenda out there. Uh, but do uh, you know that we are told to flock? I just thought about that. This week. We are full told to flock. We're told to gather together the first day of the week. <laughs> the Lord's out to flock, to come together. Uh, that sheep that's off there following its own agenda uh, is, uh, is just not good at coming together at the flock. But still he considers him part of that, uh, uh, of that uh, group of sheep. You know, where will Jesus find us walking when he comes back? Will we be wandering off somewhere that we shouldn't be? Or will we gather close to the feet of Jesus? And then... Notice the jeep, the sheep that's going on ahead of Jesus. He's just he's almost ready to fall in a little creek. He's, he's gone on ahead of Jesus. We sometimes get so fast, going so fast, that we, that we get ahead of Jesus. That we're out there and say, come on Jesus, catch up. Uh, I have a sign that says, I must hurry, for there they go, and I am their leader. We're told to be followers of Jesus. We're not to lead him where we think he should take us, but to follow where he wants us to follow. Uh, we need to finish our tasks for the Lord before we go on to the next one. There are so many things that have been started for the Lord that always remain unfinished. We're good starters, but we aren't as good as finishers. Uh, there are many things that remain unfinished for the Lord because we simply uh, are there ahead, not following the shepherd. We need to learn to, the scriptures say, wait upon the Lord, and then follow and complete anything that he wants us to do. Well, this next one I'm going to call uh, the close sheep. This one here, looking up at the shepherd, looking up at Jesus, right beside him, uh, this is the ideal. This is the place that the Lord wants us to be. Walking closely beside him, safe, contented, protected, looking up at where Jesus would lead them. How close are you to God? This sheep, I like the fact that he's looking up into the face of Jesus, always looking into the face of Jesus. Looking up in adoration of the shepherd. How sweet to walk in the footprints of Jesus. Everywhere, anytime, he walks with you and he is your shepherd. What a wonderful walk. To walk close to the shepherd. Well, you can't very well see it here in the coffee, but... My original, clear back here, there's a little tiny white speck. Actually, it's right back here. A little tiny white speck. Uh, that's the unseen sheep. Uh, it's 
just a speck still left in the dark valley way behind them, way back there on its own. The sheep is the attitude of, you know, I don't need anyone. I hear people say that, and I've never believed any one of them when they said it. I don't believe anyone truly believes I don't need anyone. There are people that are lonely, in danger. Sometimes we've walked through those dark valleys, darkness. I've been in those dark valleys. There where the darkness becomes even an overbearing weight holding me down. You know, nightfall will come. The storms will rage. The end of the day, though, is promised. Does it bring great light or great darkness? Where are we walking with the Lord? I found, as I've walked in darkness, that darkness can be always conquered by the light. You ever go into a dark room and walk in, and someone says, well, let's turn on the light, and you say, no, let's get rid of the darkness first. <laughs> you turn on the light, and the light conquers the darkness. It happens every time. If I walk in the light of the shepherd, he does conquer my fear, my darkness. He conquers my pain. I found the light is always there. If we'll just turn the light. The Lord is my shepherd. And I will never walk alone. As I follow him and move in harmony with his wishes, I discover that life becomes satisfying. Life becomes worth the living. It it acquires peace and is made an exciting adventure of fulfillment and grace. He attends me with love and care and concern because I belong to him. Oh, I love thinking of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Where are you in this picture? Which position do you hold? I love the song that says, when you walk through a storm, keep your hopes up high. Don't be afraid of the dark. You will never walk alone. Walk with the shepherd. Follow closely at his he will lift you up and bring you life. Let's stand. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you've been with us, that you talk with us, that you uh, lead us. Help us, Lord, to be good followers. Help us to walk close in your footsteps. And we pray that Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, there. there we go. One thing I forgot to make the change in the Bible study. We are finished with the fifth chapter of 1 John. So we are starting in this Wednesday in 1 Peter. So we're in 1 Peter now. I mean Romans.
<laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't make the change, because I don't know where we are. Actually, we gave an introduction to it to Romans last Wednesday, but we're in Romans. Uh, also, uh, next Sunday's sermon will be Christian Muscle Build. Uh, today's question says, Son of Son of Thunder, Sons of Thunder, who were the Sons of Thunder? Uh, now, last week's uh, question and answer was, what country in the Old Testament was called the Hammer of the Earth? And you find in Jeremiah 50, 23, it was Babylon, the Hammer of the Earth. Uh, so, uh, Let's look forward also in two weeks from today is Mother's Day. And we always honor our mothers and uh, the ladies. Uh, let's sing our closing song. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed by the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the 